I'm going to be honest. This selection is more interesting than a Netflix show. It's almost like a circus. Stop the show. <laughs> it actually is a circus. Kamala Harris versus Donald Trump is like the WWE Royal Rumble. And it gets more interesting day after day. But it's not just these people that are the most interesting in the story. Some of the other people who are supporting Kamala Harris make it even more interesting. Like, check this out with Ben Stiller. This is a chance to really, you know, to, to protect democracy and to, and to, you know, go in the right direction and go forward. So that's why everybody's got to get out and vote and donate. Um, and she's also a, a historic candidate. You know, it's going to be the first woman president. Um, and that's incredibly exciting. And, you know, she's Indian, she's black, she's everything. You can be more than one thing. It's incredible. You know, I'm Jewish and Irish. Um, I wish I was black. Every white Jewish guy wishes he was black. Um, you know, it's just get out there and, and, and vote and donate and like take advantage. This is such an important time right now. And this, this, with this wave of energy that's happening, we got, got to keep going with it. So please do everything you can. Wow. Ben Stiller wishing he was black. That's laughable, right? Or how about vice presidential candidate Tim Walz saying this? The significance of this man is that he is an older white man in a moment in which the far right is trying to convince white people that the future is treacherous for them, trying to convince men that the future is treacherous for them. And here is a, an older white man, a coach, a soldier, who is very hard to dismiss as some kind of effet coastal elite who is telling older folks and white people, you do not need to be afraid of the future. There is joy mm -hmm. in the future. There is joy in having your boss be a black woman. There is joy in what is coming. And I think he is going to teach lots of people in addition to whatever role he plays in an election and in the White House, he's gonna teach lots of people through his role in the culture that they're gonna be okay and that there's joy on the far side of realizing a multiracial democracy in this country. <laughs> this guy is gonna teach white people that there is joy in having your boss be a black woman. That, that's even more funny. I mean, I don't know what's going on with liberals, but they're really trying to convince black people that they're actually in control, which, which is not because whoever signs the checks are in control, which are not the African-American community. But more on that as we continue. You guys know I spent a lot of time over the last year covering the migration crisis and how it has affected a lot of African-Americans, especially in some of our bigger metropolitan cities. I've talked about Denver, I've talked about Boston, but there are two cities in particular that I've covered. First was New York, but secondarily, I covered the city of Chicago. Now, the city of Chicago is different in New York because Chicago has a higher percentage of African-Americans that speak out largely against these issues, especially in the South Side and on the West Side. And one of these ladies who have been speaking out against it is Zoe Lee. If you can ever see one of these Chicago board meetings, you know, every month, she's always one of the few people bringing a lot of heat. And in this particular case, I'm gonna break down her commentary within three parts. I was on my way here this morning and I was speaking to my Uber driver who was telling me that um, her son, black man, can't find any work. And when he does go to some of these temp jobs, like last year, when this black man filed a complaint with EEOC because they had the blacks, the blacks stand outside while they only gave the Latinos work. And they won that they won. The, the, the black man won that complaint, won that lawsuit. And that's the problem. It's no black and brown. And y'all know it's not no black and brown. Beatrice, you are terrible as this deputy mayor when it comes to this immigrant rights. There there are families all over the place. You talking about the lady with, with, with three kids and, and the shelter that we've been there for 11 months. Now, the second part is a Caucasian lady that's going to get up and talk about an undocumented single mother who has been in a shelter for 11 months that needs help. To learn how I can help them, particularly a single mother with three children. She's been there for 11 months and I just I have nothing to give her no information and she is not getting information from the shelter. So 
That's, I'm here to learn. Do I have a question? I, I really want to know what's the plan. So the third clip here is jo Zoe Lee coming back and explaining what's happening with the money. She's going to continue to stay there because they get money. Okay? It don't go to them. These politicians steal the money. And that's the problem. Over $2 billion has been spent on this Ponzi scheme. And they're all over the place because the politicians steal the money. And y'all gave and y'all are giving this election to Trump because you guys not only are displacing black Americans, the Obama Center for sure in Englewood, you know the stop organization has let y'all know that. I've seen three black seniors out here with cups asking for money because they can't get jobs because if they get jobs their social security may be taken away which is crazy because there's a question um going around asking if these new on um, these new these new immigrants can receive social security they didn't put a dime into this none of this makes sense so i'm trying to tell you you there's you guys have no plan now remember, Joe Biden's administration, where Vice President Kamala Harris, who's currently the Vice President, is largely responsible for this migrant crisis. And we know that because Kamala Harris is dedicated to doing this for 12 million migrants. We're gonna have 2 million people cross this border for the first time ever. You're confident this border's secure? We have a secure border in that that is a priority for any nation, including ours and our administration. Okay. Do you have any plans to visit the border? I, I'm here in Guatemala today. I, at some point, you know, I, we are going to the border. We've been to the border. So you, this whole this whole this whole thing about the border, we've been to the border. We've been to the border. You haven't been to the border. I, and I haven't been to Europe. And I mean, I don't, I don't understand the point that you're making. I'm not discounting the importance of the border. A lot of you have been talking tonight about these government health care plans that you've proposed in one form or another. This is a show of hands question, and, and hold them up for a moment so people can see. Raise your hand if, gover if your government plan would provide coverage for undocumented immigrants. Okay. Let me start with you, Mayor Buttigieg. Why? But then this is the most funniest thing today. Kamala Harris has spent decades fighting violent crime. As a border state prosecutor, she took on drug cartels and jailed gang members for smuggling weapons and drugs across the border. As vice president, she backed the toughest border control bill in decades. And as president, she will hire thousands more border agents and crack down on fentanyl and human trafficking. Fixing the border is tough. So is Kamala Harris. I'm Kamala Harris and I approve this message. Are you serious? Guys, this, <laughs> this is interesting. Are you serious? Did you just, listen to what I'm saying guys. Is the lady whose administration that's responsible for the migrant crisis is now talking about border control as if she never was responsible for it in the first place? This is crazy i just don't understand it and people are actually fighting for it and voting for kamala harris when she's responsible for what is happening now if you think about all of the things that have happened to american women with migrant people and i'm not saying all migrants are criminals but anything that's happened with a migrant crime who let those people in it was the joe biden administration it was a federal mandate they came in through texas they got bust into chicago they got bust into new york city and guess who paid for it taxpayers you paid for it no you didn't get more reinvestment into infrastructure or into your school system or into you know roads or even more money back into your pocket no you got to pay for people to infiltrate your neighborhood and take up your resources whether there are criminals or not and she's the person saying like hey i'm gonna fix the problem that i started story time i once read a story about a firefighter in a small city there were fires that were occurring every like one or two years. And the firefighter or the fire chief would be the person that would put the fire out. But there was a problem. 
people started getting suspicious because this fire chief was the first person to the scene. Well, why was that happening? Because the fire chief was aroused by fires. So he would set the fire, whatever he was gonna do, he would go up the hill, he would do some things to himself, he would then, you know, go into a climax or whatever. Then he would go down, get his troops together and put the fire out where he was a hero. He got off on that until he got caught and then he went to prison. So my thing is this, Kamala Harris, who is also responsible for the migration crisis issues, should she be allowed to solve what she was a part of in the administration? I don't think so. I think that's actually ludicrous that you would allow somebody to do such a thing. But hey, what do I know? I'm just an idiot here on YouTube with the YouTube channel. I guess I don't really know politics that well. But guys, what do you think? It's your boy, Dude Jackson, back at it again with another episode here on Kangana. I'm out.